What makes a house a home? Once again, we've asked the people of Scotland to enter their homes for Scotland's Home of the Year. Now, our judges are considering the top three from each region, choosing one to go through to our national final. Scoring them on functionality, distinctiveness and clever design are celebrated Glasgow-based interior designer Anna Campbell-Jones. She's been helping people design their homes for nearly 30 years. We're looking for great design, but also that special ingredient, love. World-recognised lifestyle blogger Kate Spears. She has over a million online followers. We're looking for somewhere that is architecturally brilliant, beautifully designed and has a sense of livability about it. And architect and university teacher Michael Angus. He steers the next generation of design talent. What I hope to find in a home is a place of magic, a place of wonder, a little bit of paradise on earth. In the end, only one house will be Scotland's Home of the Year. This time, our judges are visiting the shortlist from the Northern Highlands, and they're starting with a period property renovation in the town of Dornoch. Helen and her husband Scott spent two years revamping Balbane House, creating a contemporary interior with Scandinavian influences. Internally, we knocked quite a few walls down this, where we're sitting here. We would have been sitting in the middle of a wall. We spent probably six months doing a complete renovation. I'm a colour person, very much so. So there was no way I was wanting to keep it the Victorian look. It had to have a lot of colour, but obviously retaining some of the nice little features that we, we do have here. Helen's a colourist, so I would have said to her, oh, I don't like that. But then, when you see the thing in a larger scale, it certainly works. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's our situtery. If the weather's good, we can open the bifold door, so you've got the... It's just a, a great sitting area. Extension of the garden, and, isn't um, it? It's a great place to be in the summer's evening. This extended Victorian villa has four bedrooms, two with ensuite and one further bathroom, giving plenty of space for visiting grandchildren. Downstairs, the original lounge is complemented by an open plan dining area. This is my favourite spot in the house for two reasons. Firstly, I have a lovely view of the garden, but probably more importantly is that I can sit here with a glass of wine, watching Scott cook my meals at night. Cheers. <laughs> The judges must now assess the home, armed with only the basic facts about the property and its owners. Wow. That is a bold window colour choice, isn't it? I really like those colours. Yeah, I don't know. For once it's the first thing that's hitting me and it's not the building. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the fence about it. I mean, Why? I like the colour, but I'm not too sure about it around the windows. I think the door would have been enough. It's a very, very pretty little house, though, yes. isn't it? And obviously miss the new bit of building and over mm. there in the garden room. Mm. But they don't seem at odds at all, do they? That's a lovely entrance hall, isn't it? Mm. Ooh, my carpeted. Lots of blue in here. It feels quite calming. Oh, this is sumptuous. Oh, found the heart. Already? Yeah. Ooh. Right next to the bar cart as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's, does he think that's why it's the favourite spot? <laughs> Must admit, I don't think I would ever tire of being in a bay window. I mean, regardless of what you put in it, whether you put a table, whether you put a chair, I think I could always put my heart in a bay window. Oh, and what can you see from there? Well, it's just the idea that the window is out, you know, out the front of the building. So you can see beyond the line of the building. Mm -hmm. And if the window was right on the line, you wouldn't have that ability. It's like being able to see around corners. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. The weird thing is looking back this way. I feel as if it's really quite busy. There is a, a lot of beautiful pieces on display. I know there's this cabinet behind me, which is just chocker with trinkets. And there's also more shelving over here. And it's nice to see that. I think from the outside, when I saw the colour, I did think it was a bit too much, but in here it feels a bit more like complementary. All the colours kind of tie together to create this really serene space. Well, speaking of pulling things together, there's a very clever positioning of a mirror there, which means I've got another bay window. The mirror 
is giving me the garden again. But mainly you like sitting there because you can, can see, see yourself myself. in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you guys. <laughs> I like the scale of these yeah. spaces. This feels much better to me. This feels like cosier and simpler and all just much more inward looking. Well, I'm usually all about a sort of cluttered room. I think this might be a bit much for me. I don't know where to look. And I think when, you know, you've got a lot of like colorful items in a room and lots of bold furniture, I feel like it's better when you leave the walls quite bare. Uh, no, I don't agree. I feel like there are areas of respite from the objects, and I think the way that they're put together is quite calm. Michael, you usually find, you know, a lot well, of pattern and colour, quite a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well? OK. Are you ready for a square go? <laughs> I dump the patterns. The thing I really like is that background colour, which is, to me, is sort of tying everything together. That's the predominant sort of context of it all. On that note, I feel like a mm. big, grand, twiddly fireplace would be a good foil for the bookcase opposite. About the same as my head. What height are Hang you? On. Do you do your elbow? What height are you? Five foot two. So we need a, <laughs> <laughs> we need a fireplace five foot two high. <laughs> Job done. There you go. I love that this little cabinet is taking colour from the wallpaper. No, it matches the anglerfish in the wallpaper. Yeah. yeah. So are we in an extension? Yeah, because the ceiling height has dropped as well, hasn't yeah. it? There's two doors into this bathroom. That must go out, outside. Oh! Tell, tell me it's the door. Wow. Yeah. It makes sense because it means you've got a bathroom immediately when you come in the home, and then you've got also an ensuite, depending which door you use. Yeah, that's a clever bit of planning, isn't it? It is. Mm. As long as you remember to lock that one. <laughs> that one. The home will now be marked out of 10 with functionality, distinctiveness and clever design in mind. One score will be held back until the judges have seen all three homes when their combined scores will be revealed. The homeowner has got a very distinctive palette. The key colour in every space is some kind of version of a tealy, dark blue, but it changes from space to space. It's quite a clever way of creating different atmospheres in different rooms, but allowing them to feel connected. I'm going to give this home a nine. My favourite thing about this home is the mirrors. A well-positioned mirror can add such dimension to a home. So that mirror of the splashback is a perfect example if it weren't there, it'd be a spatial dead end. Put the mirror there, the space goes on forever. I'd enjoyed the spaces opening up, but the amount of things that were put in seemed to me to be cluttering it. I'm going to give this home an eight. I think that the homeowner just sort of embraced her own personal style and those um, personal possessions everywhere and all these charming little bits that obviously she loved so much. And I think that's something I kind of take on board as well a lot of the time. When I see something uh, and I want it, I buy it and I'll find a place for it. And it feels like they've done that a lot in this home. The only thing that sort of jars me is when there's like a bold colour on the wall and then there's a lot of clutter. I sometimes get, I, I find it a little bit too much. The next home to face the judges' evaluation is a rural new build near Thurzo. Ellen and her husband Tom built this spacious home in 2015. Inspired by the striking views over Caithness and towards Sutherland, they named it Ord Breca, a reference to the Old Norse for the point where hills meet. We'd sold their house in Thurzo and they moved out and uh, my sister and her husband were in and I said to my brother-in-law, I've always fancied building a house in this bit of ground up here and he says I'll sell it to you and that's how it all started. So the whole house is really based around this room and to be honest everything else kind of came sick a bit secondary you know. We're always going to have big windows and we're always going to have a, a glazed gable end. Wanted a new house, didn't want to fill a new furniture. That we nook in the snug was built specifically for that dresser. It was the same as the one behind me there and they both came from um, a school my dad was head of, Miller Academy in Thurzo, and I just could not bear to part with them. All our kids come back here. We've had some great times here, great parties. Baxter makes it a home, and we'll never do it again. <laughs>
definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> definitely not again. This home has two beds and three baths, as well as a family snug on the lower ground floor. It makes use of local materials throughout, including Caithness stone, and its upper level is dominated by its open plan living space. And this is my favourite spot in the house because I just feel this is what the whole house was based around, this big room, the most important bit. We're coming up to what is clearly a rather elegant new building in a beautiful landscape. Giant windows with views all the way out to Orkney. Yeah, I see right through there, yeah, I see that. I love corrugated metal roofs and appropriate in a kind of rural farming area because it's reminiscent of agricultural buildings. Yeah. So oh, we've got multiple levels already. And almost immediately the favourite spot. I think it's coming into the whole volume. Mm. I think it's just that moment before you just, the whole thing just kind of opens up. Yeah, I think because it is such an open space and then you've got the kitchen here, you've got the living area and then surrounded by these incredible views. Mm. Although, where the stairs arrive, You've got a wall, not a view, so you have to actually kind of make your choice. You've got to go into the kitchen or go into the dining area or go into the seating area if you want to see the main view, which is that one that's towards Orkney. Well, it's absolutely amazing view, isn't it? Across that undulating countryside and then Orkney glimmering in the distance. Well, while we're in the kitchen, I just want to point out there's no top cabinets, which I really like to see, because I think if you've got the space in here, then you don't really need to clutter up the walls with extra storage. I do have some rather strong feelings about wall cabinets. Don't like them. Oh. Oh, no, are we going to have another one? No, we're, we're going to agree, because I don't have them. <laughs> I, I'm, no, I'm not a fan either. No, <gasps> walls are for something better, I think. Mm, open shelving. <laughs> <laughs> there's rather a lot of wood in here. From here, it's almost merging into the floor and the furniture and the tan leather sofas. I think it works because in the kitchen, we've got, kind of got this lovely sage colour on the, on the cabinets and then they've got lots of lovely soft furnishings that are all kind of tartan, um, lots of pattern in there. So I feel like that kind of works, it separates it. I know, watch out for the dog bed. <laughs> and a step over it. Oh. That's amazing. I wonder why the balcony's on, on this end of the building. Well, I was trying to work that out. It's all been about orientation, because you do want to end up here, because our best view is that way, but all the sun is coming this way. Mm. If you swung all this round, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but then the problem is it's all north-facing, and all your sunlight's coming yeah. that way. So. Always a dilemma and a design dilemma, isn't it? A bit of a conundrum. A conundrum, yeah. I think this could be bigger and then have more seating out here because it's not really maximised. You think this moment should be a bigger moment? Mm -hmm. Right. It's sort of counterintuitive, isn't it, to go out through the big doors? You yes. want to go, oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. Whereas, see we, that. whereas we've come out and gone, oh, like oh that. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. Oh, it's over there. Ooh, a wee snuggy room. <laughs> Oh, gosh, a completely different atmosphere. Mm, look at the way the dresser is built into that space. I've never seen that before. Hang on, I'm just going to sit on this lovely, lovely little stool with a cushion. <laughs> um, yeah, the skirting has been brought around both sides and then scribed to this piece of furniture, which makes me think that it's a really important piece for them to actually build the house to suit the furniture. I mean, that doesn't happen very often, does it? And I must admit, I'm never a huge fan of big, bulky pieces of furniture sitting out from a wall. So I really like the fact that they're burying this piece of furniture into the wall. You would prefer a space with no furniture in it at all, well, obviously. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's interesting down here because they've got, I know it's a more traditional fireplace, whereas upstairs they've kind of got a log burner, didn't they? I don't know, you come down here and it's like a retreat that you... Yeah want to spend time and it seems a bit more, I don't know, old-fashioned, I'd probably say. So this feels like a, a like a seasonal room, doesn't it? 
You draw the curtains in the winter, light the fire, turn your back on the weather and just get cosy. Lovely bright room. It's really sumptuous, isn't it? With all the all the kind of knit, knitted textures and tweed and the little wooden buttons. Mm. It's very consistently thought through. Isn't it lovely how the bed has this incredible view and then up the way as well. So you get kind of sky, you get land, all from the comfort of your bed. They've made a conscious decision to make this room too high. So they're trying to make the master bedroom be something special and dramatic. And I'm just wondering if that window is a bit ordinary. ordinary. It needs more action from yeah. an architectural point of view. Yeah, the architects need to get more on it. You think that's what you're saying? Mm. All right, hang on, I'll get my, I'll get my tools. <laughs> I find it hard to connect with uh, new builds. I like to see a building rich in history, so it was good to see that they hadn't um, completely modernised this new space. I kind of had a sort of vintage feel as you walked around the home. If I was going to change something, I probably would have been a bit more daring with the bedrooms. You know, you've got this space to play with, and why not have some fun with it? I'm going to give this home an eight. The outside, the building was very much trying to pick up on traditional Scottish language. It had the white render. It's picking up on sort of industrial buildings. It's it's playing that game, and I think playing that game rather well. The big thing I would change is the focus of the main orientation of that window. I would really seriously consider picking the whole building up and swinging it through 90 degrees if I could. I'm gonna give this home an eight. There are clearly pieces of furniture that are well-loved family heirlooms um, and they take pride of place. And the new furniture acts as a kind of foil to the existing furniture. One thing I would change about this home would be to have French doors opening out from the master bedroom into that sun trap deck area. The final contender in the Northern Highlands is in the hamlet of Skelbo overlooking Loch Fleet. Local business owners John and Genevieve left London in pursuit of their dream home. Rainbow's End was originally owned by John's father and stepmother, but has been extensively modified and extended to create a light, bright, contemporary home. The core of the house, the open plan living room, uh, is, is the original house. I can still see the original room and this space now is how it originally was. So we have that memory here, even though it's unrecognizable on most levels. So what we did, we brought a lot more space to the property, but we also opened it up in terms of glass and outside space and generally tried to bring outside in. It's quite interesting, for a long time we lived in New York and we lived in London, and the colours that you might use there don't work here in a glass-fronted house. So one of the things we thought about a lot here is what colours work and don't jar mm. with the outside. And I'd never had to think about that before. I'd always lived in tiny apartments or Victorian houses with small windows. So, so we did think a lot about that. After that, it's pretty easy just to put everything we love around us. I mean, honestly, you could do anything in this house and really it would still be brilliant because of what's outside. This colourful rural home incorporates four bedrooms and four bathrooms, plus a large wraparound garden, covered patio with log burner and panoramic views. So this is my favourite spot in the home because it may seem unusual as a bath, but it means I can sit in the bath and I can look up the valley or out across the lock over to the mountains. It's just absolutely magical. Do we look at the house or the view? I'm <laughs> sorry, I haven't even looked at the house yet. Wow. Beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. OK, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's pretty good. Look at the pop of colour with the fuchsia door. Isn't that lovely? I love this colour that they painted the outside. Like a smoky grey. Yeah. Uh, not white. Yeah, yeah not yeah, white. Yeah. Not yes. White. I think with the slate roof, it's just perfect, yeah. isn't it? And I love all the gables just coming at us. Isn't that brilliant? Yes, all at different angles all as well. Different angles, yeah. Shall we get warm? Yes. Mm. Ooh, we're 
into the bedroom. With the bed in the middle of the room. This is quite a feature, isn't it, having the bed so far away from the wall? This room is it's, it's just about the bed, so it's about sleeping, so we'll put the bed right in the middle so that you can sense how important the sleeping aspect is. Mm -hmm. One thing I would say is master bedroom on the ground floor and then you can walk straight out. You know, I mean, you sort of look at it now, you think, why would I ever have a bedroom that didn't do that? Absolutely. That's on my bucket list, yeah. mm -hmm. to be able to walk straight out of my bedroom into the garden. Look at how beautifully the garden is planted as well. Ooh, the bathroom, and I found the favourite spot. Oh, this is a good favourite spot. Bath, right out to the view. Oh, it's lovely. And to the, the positioning of the bath with the window, you know. So if you're seeing that in this room, I'm assuming that someone is thinking about window positions all the way through the home. I love the herringbone Carrara marble mosaic. And the mosaic goes all the way around. And then you have a marble vanity top mm. and bespoke cabinet work underneath. And two mirrors. And two mirrors, I know! <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, well, look at the rainbow bookcase. Oh, I like that. Oh, so do you? Cool. I'm not sure. What? Anna! <laughs> really? Even look. Michael likes look. the colour. You get a whole, <laughs> like whole black. black. <laughs> I think it looks really pretty. Mm -hmm. But unless you know what colour the spine is of the book that you want to find, it must be a bit annoying. I think that's the fun of it, though, because you come and look for a book and then you end up finding something better and then you just go with that one instead. No, I'm not sure if um, the inner librarian in me can cope <laughs> with that. That suits you, Michael. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was just actually looking at the fireplace and I love it when the design of the fireplace is like um, a microcosm of the design of the building that it's in. Mm. So we've got rendered solid elements either side and then that very honest piece of oak with the little split in it. I love that the seating options give you kind of, you, you can choose where you want to look. So you can face the TV or the fireplace, but also you've got another option of these armchairs over here. So if you want to look out of the view, you've got that option. Pink armchair. Oh, two pink armchairs. Oh. That's a nice combination of colours, isn't it? Are you enjoying that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I really like that. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I really do. See the purple and the mustard and the grey? I mean, the patterns can go, but the colours, <laughs> the colours can stay. We've worn you down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more intrigued by this storage over here. How do we Giant. open it? Well, these are these shutters oh. that you... Oh, hey. <laughs> a secret room. It's like one of those dreams you have where you find a hidden door and you oh, realise your was house was twice oh, the size. Oh, look. This is my heaven attic. <laughs> no, it definitely seems more masculine in here. I was, it's really nice to see that we've got into the, into the attic space because all we saw when we arrived at the house were the gables and I've been missing them all the way through the house. And here we are in a space that is clearly part of that architectural form. Great, love it. Are you going to have a go? Yes. OK, come on, then. We got you Entertain us. <laughs> They'd really maximise the views. Um, there was the view at the end of the bed, and again, in the, in the living area, I had doors that could be slid back, and you could just embrace the view. It felt like a place I wanted to spend my time in. I can't think of a single thing I'd change. I really did love to be in this home. I'm going to give this home a 10. Something that really impressed me was the range of different atmospheres that this home provides whilst remaining completely harmonious. That's what you do when you're building a home. You've got this amazing opportunity to give yourself all these different kinds of spaces. I mean, it was just, it was just delightful. I'm going to give this home a 10.
My favourite thing about this home was discovering the secret room. Just to give over a roof space like this and you can just inhabit it and enjoy it, but found through secret doors, um, that was a magical moment. I have no objection to colour, obviously. I just sometimes see overused and becomes distracting. So, you know, keep those to, their, to the moments when it seems, um, yeah, appropriate, yeah. Now that the judges have visited all three homes, they can see how they compared against each other. First, it was Kate who held back her score for Balbane House in Dornoch. Beautiful sandstone home. Michael, you gave it an eight. I did. I gave it a nine. Well, this was a home that truly embraced bold patterns and colours. Uh, had a really strong sense of style, and I felt that it made for a really lively home. So I gave it a nine. Hmm. So a nine, a nine, and an eight mm -hmm. gives us twenty-six. Ooh. Next, Anna is yet to reveal her score for Ordbreka near Thurgil. Kate, you gave it an eight. Michael, you gave it an eight. An eight. I did. The location of the house was stunning. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more fun and a little bit more variety with the interior. So I gave this home an eight. Okay, three eights. Three eights makes 24. And finally, Michael is divulging his score for Rainbow's End in the hamlet of Skelbo. I love the gables, and I love that it had taken on the little bit of an existing building to take advantage of that wonderful view. So I gave Rainbow's End a nine. Oh, Rainbow's End gets 29. Oof, a colorful stunner for the final. <laughs> <laughs> a brilliant addition to the final. Yeah, that's great. Rainbow's End wins in the Northern Highlands and is one step closer to claiming the title Scotland's Home of the Year. Next time, <laughs> the judges visit the Lothians and the East. Which bit of you do you want to reveal? <laughs> As the search continues for Scotland's Home of the Year.